But coming back to, you know, as a parent, we, we really um, want for our children three things, and that is health, happiness, and success. So how can, how can we uh, achieve that via sport? To just... Say it later. Because we, we do want sport and physical activity to be an agent for that to, to occur. But for sport to be quality sport, for sport to, to be really good, um, uh, we have to improve sport. We have to work to improve sport. Because it's quality sport that makes a difference, not just sport. So how is the quality of our sport? So here's four ways that we can, uh, that we can use as a guide to improve sport. Well, we've got develop a physical literacy fourth, um, but it's to ignite kids' passion to play. We, we want them to want to play. And, and we have this organized sports system. But we want the kids to play at recess. We want the kids to, to play in the backyard. We want them to play. We want them to love the activity enough to play and feel good about doing that activity. So we have to find ways for them to choose to be active rather than choose to go and sit in front of that, that PlayStation or TV or video. Um, we, 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 need to, we, we need to ignite their passion to play. And kids don't play like adults. And I think, you know, based on the, the, the room, you guys know the deal on that. And then we've got to give kids the right to try. And we'll get into this a little bit more when we talk about competition, but giving the kids the right to try um, is, is really often related to competition structures. And, and so I'll explain that in, in greater depth uh, this afternoon. But if we, if we look at those four things as foundational to improving the quality of sport, we'll, we'll start to go in the right direction. So. Ignite your kid's passion to play. This is it. That's the famous drive you used to shoot in all the time? Yeah, the one I missed. That's yeah. Great. It's pretty beat up, eh? How about you shoot one in there? Yeah, sure. First one in nine? Yeah, you all got right. it. You're going down. <laughs> you want to shoot first or second? You go first. Oh, yes! <laughs> this is where he and his friends spent hours. One, nothing. I like that. Do celebrate <laughs> while I'm first, you know? Practice and play. Oh my god. Oh my god. Two in a row. He would just make up games how many pucks he can get in the net or how many times he would hit the net without missing. Or... Good response right there. Yeah! Sorry, Mr. Crosby. Three, two. So, there's a couple of kids that loved to play. And you can see by the dryer. They played a lot. <laughs> now, the interesting thing is that as parents, how many parents would allow that racket to go on in the basement? You know, are our parents allowing that environment to happen where it's a god-awful racket down in the basement and it's beating the crap out and every now and then a window gets broken, a light gets, gets broken, so as parents, are we allowing that, that passion to play to occur? Because it would be a lot quieter if they just went and, and, and watched a video than that racket, right? So again, we've got you know, to train parents in this to be able to create the environment. And, and I, I mean, I know with my active kids that it's always, it's always a balancing act whether, you know, to go watch and, you know, we didn't have, a, we didn't have a cable TV and, and for a long time and, and, and my wife, uh, we have cable now because we moved and, and, and uh, my wife said, well, you know, should we get rid of cable? And it's like, well, what's the point? 
they they can they can stream it on every computer in the house. They can they can stream shows on every computer in the house. So the access to this information is so you know it's just so viral and around us. And with my kids, if I say, "Hey, want to go and play?" Boy, they'll do it right now. So it's parents that we've got to really work with to 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 get them. Uh, to, to model being, being active and to allow um, fun to occur. So again, kids don't play like adults and, and well, this kind of tells a story. Change is coming to tennis, and kids are leading the way. It's called 10 and Under Tennis, and it's a fun way for your kids to really learn the game. With courts and equipment modified to fit them, kids will develop faster and better and enjoy themselves along the way. So get your kids involved now. With 10 and Under Tennis, every child can learn to love the game. There's, um, there's recently a, uh, one done by the English FA, um, again, along the same lines. So, you know, if you Google, Google that, there would be uh, another YouTube one. I was, I was also on, uh, on YouTube uh, uh, a little while ago, and there's, there's a, a, a YouTube uh, of this tennis coach, and, and he's, he's bringing a whole, whole bunch of different uh, different balls onto the court, and, and he's got it's it's a, it's a spoof. It's, and and, he, and he's and he's got nets kind of all around him, and basically he he's explaining how much a pain in the ass it is to have different kinds of balls, different nets, and it's just so stupid. And you know we should just play on you know on the regular tennis court. That's the tennis court. Kids can play on it. And just really having having to go at age appropriate equipment and facilities, and those you know those people are out there, and those those people, you know they don't want to change, and and they because it, it is more work often, it, and sometimes it's more expensive, but but not you know a lot of this can be done that is not not more expensive. But those people are out there that don't want to change. They find it confusing. They find it difficult uh, because they've done something for decades and now you're asking them to do something different. And, and it's, it's a challenge. It's a constant challenge. And what we see when, when people uh, and organizations do change is that when that champion steps even a little bit away, there'll be backsliding. By, by that small percentage that just really don't like change. And so uh, we have to continue to you know, take on that challenge um, with, uh, with, with all of this. And give the kids a right to try. So again, we'll, we'll let them. What these things have in common is, is that kids will take a chance. You know, if they don't know, they'll have a go. Am I right? They're not frightened of being wrong. Now, I don't mean to say that being wrong is the same thing as being creative. What we do know is, if you're not prepared to be wrong, you'll never come up with anything original. If you're not prepared to be wrong. And by the time they get to be adults, most kids have lost that capacity. Uh, they have become frightened of being wrong. And we run our companies this, by the way. We stigmatize mistakes. And we're now running national education systems where mistakes are the worst thing you can make. And 
The result is that we are educating people out of their creative capacities. Picasso once said this, he said that all children are born artists. The problem is to remain an artist as we grow up. I believe this passionately, that we don't grow into creativity, we grow out of it. So, to me that's a bit of brilliance. And uh, like, like Picasso, I believe that all children are born athletes until we create the environment for them not to be. And we see this so much in, the, in, in, in Canada, um, especially in our team sports, where we, we look at our team sports play internationally and we, and we envy, you know, we envy the Spanish and the, the Argentinians who have such creativity, they bring such creativity to the game. And we go, why can't our, you know, our national team athletes do this? And the reason is, is that we have beat that out of them as children. You know, we've, we've as parents, We've st stood on the sideline and, and yelled at children taking risk. And we've stigmatized children who are creative. If you don't believe that, well, why do we go, ah, he's such a hot dog. What a ball hog. What a puck hog. He didn't pass. He didn't pass to my kid. Right? We, stigma, we stigmatize those kids that want to be creative in one-on-one -on -one situations. Ultimately, at the highest level, you have to be really good one-on-one. -on -one. But we try, and, we try and beat that out of the kids. Uh, the Canadian Soccer Association is looking at creating a, a campaign that that's would be called the Don't Just Kick It campaign. Mm -hmm. To try and have parents understand to stop yelling at their kids, kick it, you know, for the back line, kick it, you know, kick it away, you know, oh, lost the ball, we got scored against, the world is just come falling down upon us, you know, bad kid, some off, you know, and, and I mean, that's what we do in our youth sports, and then we wonder, geez, why are these other nations so darn creative? later and it's it's what we've done in our in our structure in our development and and it and you know we 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 get what we develop and so so these are the things that we're, we're trying to do when we're working with sports to be able to actually change the format of competition and as I say we'll we'll get into that uh, a little bit more something so coming uh, right back down to the base, to physical literacy, and uh, uh, there's a there's a number of, of definitions uh, around physical literacy that are more complex or or, or simpler, um, and, and this is you know this is just a, a, a simple one. Um, I'm going to. Uh, uh, how many of you have seen the Active for Life uh, video? Uh, so there's a few of you who haven't, so now you're going to have an opportunity to see it. And how many of you have seen the second Active for Life video? The Vincent LeCavalier video. Oh, some people right on the cutting edge. Good. <laughs> Only 10% of us get enough daily exercise. And that number is dropping. Nearly 30% of us are overweight or obese. We spend six hours a day in front of a screen. As a result, we now have a shorter life expectancy than our parents. But give us the right start in sports, and we'll never stop. Learn how at activeforlife.ca. Um, and, and again, uh, you, uh, you all are, are aware of this. 
in terms of the development of physical literacy, and then in in the different environments, uh, or, or sorry, not to environments yet, um, in terms of the of the, the, the movement of the body, um, locomotion, and object control. So, uh, again, it's the, it's that whole body approach, and then there's the the many different many different movements that we want to develop in the kids. <laughs> Why do we want to do that? We want to do that so that kids can do many, many different things. That they have a choice. So that they'll fall in love with something. They'll have the passion to play something. And uh, in, in Kamloops and in, in, in BC, uh, with the exception of Victoria, um, you have all these, uh, all these different environments to play in. Um, and we don't have much ice and snow in Victoria. Uh, so we, we want to develop kids that have this wide range of, of ability so that they can be active, they can find their passion. And they don't end up being seduced by uh, this uh, sedentary activities. And you, you all, you all know these. Um, the one thing that we we do have in Victoria is we have a we have an outdoor kindergarten, a nature kindergarten. Very cool, very cool. And uh, and we know that's happening in other places in the world, but. Uh, it's nice to see that it's happening in Canada and, uh, and, and in, in BC. So we want kids to develop those, those fundamental movement skills so that they can play lots of activities. And it comes back to the brain, right? It comes back to, to dendrites and, and of course when we talk about talent it all comes back to myelin. Right? It's all about myelin and dendrites. So we'll see what uh, Colin has to say. Developing physical literacy in our children is of critical importance if they're going to lead long, healthy and active lives. And to me, the key to developing physical literacy is all about what happens in the brain. In the first six years of life, the brain develops billions and billions of connections called synapses that join all of the nerves in the brain with the nerves that run to the muscles. When children engage in lots of different activities, lots of additional connections are made between the brain and the muscles so that the child develops good physical control. Any of those connections between the brain and the muscles that aren't used after about the age of six or seven get pruned out and lost. And so in developing physical literacy, what we need to do is expose young children to a very wide range of physical activities to build the greatest number of connections between their brain and their muscles and then keep them in a range of activities so that those connections are not lost in the pruning process. But uh, uh, again, when you're, when you're out presenting, uh, to have Colin explain uh, the, uh, the, the brain is, is often more effective than a person like myself. So uh, uh, that's why we've embedded that video. But the, the bottom line is that when we, when we look at the, the development of the brain, um, you can see the number of brain cells that are created when... Uh, from zero to two. So you have these brain cells. The number of connections uh, when, when kids are young uh, is, is huge. And then it's basically use it or lose it. And that's, you know, that's with movement, that's with language, that's with, with uh, many, many uh, different activities. Um, 
So if we can give kids a wide range of movement uh, when they're young, we'll, we'll create those connections. Those connections won't be, uh, won't be lost, they won't be pruned, um, and then we'll have that, that general athleticism um, that we want in children to be able to be a foundation for many activities. So, building a better brain. And, again, what I say to, to, to parents is, you know, get your kids in swimming, gymnastics, and running, some running sport, um, as, as just a, a primary foundation. Um, gymnastics is, is absolutely fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, it's a bit pricey. Um, and, and because gymnastics, of course, has been long taken out of the school system, um, the opportunity for kids um, is, is, is often compromised. However, what has happened in terms of working with sports and working with uh, uh, you know, the, the, the movement and physical literacy is we see, uh, as an example, Canadian Soccer Association has changed their, uh, their coach education program to now where it's it's the first level is active start, then it's fundamentals, then it's learn to train, and it's and their their first three stages of coaching education are, are developing soccer and physical literacy and and what they're coaching their uh, what they're training their coaches to do is more uh, movement activities with a ball as opposed to okay we're we're just learning kicking. And so, so as we do this with sports, sports will be better able to contribute to the physical literacy development within children. So obviously, who makes it happen? It's, 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 uh, it starts with the parents. And one of the things that we have to, we have to be able to get through to parents um, is that it doesn't just happen. You know, these things don't just happen. Reading, math, social studies, sciences, they don't just happen. Kids go to school and, and parents are, parents know that there needs to be training for understanding in these areas to occur. Um, what, what parents don't seem to know is that kids don't just run perfectly it's through birth, that it's actually a skill to be developed. And I think without that understanding in, by parents, then we'll, we won't get physical educators back in the school system because there isn't seen to be that need because, well, my kid can run. Well, not really. They're a very inefficient runner. They make a running motion but it's an incorrect motion. You need to send them to Kelly and Andrea for to develop running skills. And and our parents don't our parents don't know that. And and that's why essentially parents have allowed physical educators to be to leave our, our school system. So we need to educate parents to understand it doesn't just happen. It needs to be trained, it needs to be educated for that competence to occur. When that competence occurs, then the kids will be active because they, they feel confident in, in, in doing it. So, just six, uh, six things that we want to have parents keep in mind and you know, obviously uh, it's a challenge to get to all parents, um, and, and we're trying to do that in, in a number of ways. The Active for Life website is really targeting that, that young parent. Um, and again, this, this presentation is in the Become a Champions section. You guys ready? Follow me. For the first time ever, experts say our children won't live as long as we will. As a parent, you can change that 
by helping your child develop physical skills and confidence. It's easy to get started. Go to activeforlife.ca. So that's available. And, and obviously, you know, fundamental <coughs> principles of change, uh, change management is you've got to create a crisis. You've got to create a reason for change. And if that's not a reason for change, then uh, I'm not sure what, what is. Um, and uh, here's, here's another view. But I probably would make a time machine. I would make medicine for the sick. I'd probably invent something new. If I could have an extra five years to live. You said five, right? Five years. That's a long time. I would try to fix everything I did bad. I would bring my uncle back because I miss him very much. I would um, get a, more hamsters. I would probably want to go looking for dark matter. I think I'd go looking for aliens. If I could live an extra five years. I was thinking about making like a a helicopter, like a wooden helicopter, but I don't have any wood. I want to go check out the moon sometime. I'd probably teach my sister not to hate tuna. I would try and invent a machine that lets you, that lets you run at light speed. If I had five more extra years to live, I would be the boss of all the chipmunks. Eu cantaria na frente de um milhão de pessoas. I don't really know. I think I'd do anything. Why are you asking me that? If it's not a reason to at least be open to new ideas and to change, then, then we have to leave those people behind. If we, we, we some, you know, one, we're Canadian um, and, and we're, we tend to be nice and we want everybody to get on the bus before we take take and leave with that bus. So if somebody's outside, you know, on the curb, stomping their, their feet saying, no, I won't go, we wait. We can't wait. We can't wait. We can't wait for everybody to be on the bus. We gotta go. We, got, we gotta change things. We gotta make things better because we have an issue. We have a dramatic issue where our children are gonna live shorter lives than us so you know again you're your champions out uh, out there so use these tools um, you know to 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 cause change uh, you know and 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 to grab attention that's uh, yeah designed to move it's uh, funded by Nike so we have the the four calls to action and, and we have to ask ourselves, we have to ask uh, um, uh, the, the, the people that we're presenting to um, what, what is their, what are they going to do? And, uh, and, then, and then help them out in terms of, of obviously, you're here to educate yourself um, to be better. So you, you know, get a tick in that box. Um, oops. Um, you, you've been doing presentations, you know, when's your next pre presentation? How do we get people out to those presentations to be engaged? Is there a way that we can go to, instead of having people come to us, is there ways to go out and, and, uh, and get at people where, where, they, where they are um, and, and to be able to educate others and all about improving that, that experience of, of the child? 
Um, so again, I, there was a, a number of you that have um, become a champion. So on the Canadian Sport for Life website, um, if you go to the Become a Champion uh, uh, tab, you, uh, you, you can go in there and just follow the instructions and then you'll kind of go in the back of the house and, and uh, uh, there's, a, there's a number of presentations there. There's actually uh, eight presentations there. There's four presentations and, and, and they're all set up where they're short and long. And you can take them, you can use them. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, so that, you know, you can uh, maybe more effectively be able to cause change. Uh, there's also, um, I think you probably know all of these. You can follow me on Twitter. Um, uh, I'm at, at Richard underscore way. Um, how, how many of you tweet and have a Twitter account? Well, not many. Not many. Um, it's a very effective way to keep connected. And I know it's, you know, for many of us, it's new technology. And, uh, but I've managed to, you know, I've managed to pull myself into, into that world. And, uh, and I find that, you know, it's like interesting information comes in from, you know, these multiple organizations that are out there. And there's, there seems to be uh, nuggets coming through on a regular basis. Um, there's a whole bunch of organizations that we're working with and as uh, many of you know we're not really an organization um, we uh, we're not a separately incorporated outfit um, we're really just a, a collective of individuals who are um, uh, you know and so you're all part of that collective of, of, of individuals for uh, for the movement towards quality sport um, we're going to have a really exciting uh, conference that we're putting together up in uh, up in Banff, so it's pretty close for for uh, for all of us. Um, and we're we're pulling together. Uh, Vicky is uh, is leading it with uh, with me, um, and we're going to just have great people um, uh, presenting up in Banff in in uh, next spring. So we would invite all of you to um, uh, come to that. Uh, we don't have much on, on the website uh, at this point in time, but there will be information. And it'll be hosted by the International Sport for Life Society. Um, so if you're uh, Googling, I mean, it, it'll also be up on the Canadian Sport for Life, that information. But So kind of mark your, mark your calendars on that. Um, and, uh, and in fact, um, there uh, is a call out for abstracts. Um, uh, I'd love uh, love you to when abstracts is a pretty intimidating you know unless you're uh, you know you're in the academic world you're used to abstracts um, abstracts is really just a summary of a presentation proposal and we we'd love to hear uh, for you to come up and, and hear uh, what you guys are doing you know like wh wh what you're doing to, to come up to Banff and we've structured it where we're gonna have these um, you know these high-powered guys uh, presenting, like uh, like Vicky Harbor and um, uh, guys is a gender-neutral term. I'm not offended. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Judy Kent told me that years ago. So, um, uh, and uh, and then we've also structured it so that we can have people that are on the ground doing great things, and I and I know that that you're here in the room. Um, to be able to present and be able to share so that uh, we can have tremendous learning and collaboration. Uh, so that's going to be happening. That's a shameless promotion um, of, uh, of the International uh, Physical Literacy Conference. Uh, and, and that's it for my plenary uh, this morning. How's my time? Good. Good? Yeah. Okay.